How are you today? Glad you're here. We're going to do the I am here and you are there song. I'm going to say it first and then you sing back to me, okay? I'll sing it, I'll sing it kind of out loud with you so you know how to do it. I am say I'm glad I'm here. Sing it after me. I'm glad I'm here. Glad I'm here. I'm glad you're there. Glad you're there. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you're there. So we can be together. Whether near or far away, I thank God for you each day. And so I sing. I sing from here. I sing from here. sing together we can sing together glad you're here today dave's glad you're here yay good We're, singing, Jenny. oh thanks dave good <laughs> playing lovely. it takes both of us it's yeah great we're going to talk about lent a little bit we're right in the middle of lent do you remember what it is it's the season between christmas when jesus was born and Jesus' death on the cross so he could rise again at Easter time. We're about, it's 50 days total. We're about halfway, a little more than halfway there. So we're on that journey of Lent. Can you stand up and do all these actions with me? We're going to walk together first. So get your feet moving. Walk together, children. Okay, sing with me. Walk together, children. Don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get tired. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. We're walking together on our journey through Lent. Do you remember what weary means? It means super, super tired. And after 50 days, we might be getting kind of tired of Lent. But we're going to keep going anyway. <laughs> Let's hop like an Easter bunny. <laughs> Take Hop together, children, don't you get weary. Hop together, children, don't you get tired. Hop together, children, don't you get tired. We're hopping together on our journey through Lent. Great, let's clap. Clap together, children, don't you get weary. Clap together, children, don't you get tired. Clap together, children, don't you get weary. Let's clap together on a journey through Lent. Now we're going to sway like a tree in the wind. Oh, sway together, children, don't you get weary. Sway together, children, don't you get tired. Sway together, children, don't you get weary. We're swaying together on our journey through Lent. Swaying together on our journey through Lent. That's kind of fun to sway. You kind of keep your feet on the ground, huh, Dave? I was afraid you'd like fall over. I almost you did. Were I was so tired. Way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Great. Dave, I lost one of my earrings. I just noticed that in the camera. Oh, gosh. Hmm, have you guys ever lost anything? I lost my one of my favorite earrings. Have you seen it? I'm anymore? gonna look for it. Okay. We'll look, but we also have right. to keep going. We gotta so. keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. I'll look for it later. I hope I find it. I hope okay. you found something that you've lost. Have you ever lost some one of your favorite things? I just lost my favorite earring. And it kind of goes with the message I was gonna say, sing about and talk about. The next song we're gonna do is about about finding things that are lost. Once they're lost, you can be found. In Matthew 7. Verse 7, it says this, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. And it reminds us, the story they tell about is Jesus' love for us no matter what. And the example they give is, if a, if a child comes to a parent, like you go to your mom or dad, and you say, I'm hungry, and you are looking for something to feed you, and your parent gives you a rock. Does that satisfy you? No. What if you say, I'm hungry and I kind of want fish, and they start cooking a snake? Oh, I 
I wouldn't eat it. I heard it tastes like chicken, but I wouldn't eat it. And that's the story, or it's an example of God's love is there. If we ask for God's love, it is always there for us, all the time. It feeds us and nourishes us. So we're going to sing a song that has actions. We're going to seek. Do you know what it means to seek? You're looking. So we're going to look. Seek, and ye shall find. We're going to knock. You can do that. Or I have this. So I'm going to hit two sticks together. And the door shall be opened. Ask like a prayer. And it shall be given. And the love, make your love sign, will come tumbling down. Okay, let's sing it with me. Ready? We're going to seek first. Seek and ye shall find. Just knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given and the love will come tumbling down. Let's do it again. Let's seek. Keep looking. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Just and it shall be given, and love will come tumbling down. Like a snowball on the top of a hill, it rolls and rolls, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, just like God's love is always there, and it just grows. Thanks, Dave. That was a good musical accompaniment. Thank you for that. Have you guys ever been lost? I have been, thanks to Google Maps, and you were found, obviously, because you're with your family now, right? You're at home. Dave has a really great story, and it's about another person that gets lost. I wonder if they get found. Hmm, we'll see. Stand by. Yeah, so here's Dave, and I'll go back. <gasps> Dave! What? My earring. Hey! I found my earring. It must have fallen off when we were practicing hopping or something. There yeah. it is. It might oh, have fallen now I'm going to be a human that's not just a pirate. It might have fallen off during the hopping. It might have. Possibly the swearing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Judy, I'm so glad you found that earring. Me too. There's a couple stories in the Bible, isn't there, about people who lost a coin, people who lost a pearl, various, various things, right? And then you found it. I'm really glad. And today we do have a story, like Judy said. I'm going to wash my hands. Judy, you're far away, right? How far are you away back there? I'm at least 10 feet away. It's at least 10 feet away. So we're still being careful, right? As you should be. Don't be paranoid. Don't be worried. But be careful, right? Give everybody their space so we can all stay healthy. I'm actually cleaning my hands too a little bit. So I can show you a few things. Today's story is called... Watch this, the prodigal son, the prodigal son. Judy, it took me almost 60 years because I looked it up last night. Prodigal does not mean lost. I guess I always thought it meant lost, right? But it means someone who spends extravagantly, someone who spends like too much, like maybe selfishly, like, and pro, right? Pro means forward or forth. And agari, I guess, a Latin word, uh, meaning extravagant or lavish spending. So it's a, this story today is going to be about a son who gets a bunch of money and then spends it all. <laughs> and then he's got to go back home. So, But before we get to that, let me show you something called an illuminated manuscript. A manuscript, we kind of know what that is, right? That's a piece of paper of some kind, like a book, a letter, uh, maybe, yeah, something like that. Um, and here's something from an illuminated manuscript, meaning they're telling a story in pictures. I'm going to have Jesus, right, from our Spark Story Bible. He's going to point out a few things in this one here. Have you ever seen a comic book? Do you read comic books? Have you ever seen a graphic novel, right, where they tell a story with pictures and sometimes with dialogue? This one has just pictures because back in the old timey days, not everybody could read. So if you can read, thank a teacher. And if you can read music, thank a music teacher. But here's something from an illuminated manuscript to tell the story of the prodigal son, all right? In this first frame right here, we see the son saying, hey, dad, I would like all my money. That's due me. And usually you'd wait for the inheritance, but he said, I want it now. Okay, and then he hits the road. He's got all his money. <laughs> Maybe he has his money in those bags. I didn't even notice that, Judy. He's got big bags, but he's got all his money. Then what does he do? First thing he does, throws a big party. And parties are fun. Parties can celebrate good times and important things in our lives. Or 
you can spend a lot of money and it's just kind of selfish. So that's his case. He was just having a good time, not worrying about his family, not worrying about working, just goofing off and spending lots and lots of money. Oh, he's out of money. And now guess what he's doing? He's taking care of pigs. Now, for our farmer friends and rancher friends, that's a job with great dignity. It's an important job to take care of wildlife and livestock, right? But in his case, he had no other job he could do, so his job was to go out and just feed pigs. And luckily, he was hired by somebody. But he's going, oh my gosh, at home, I didn't have to do that, and I could do something else. So he goes home, and what does his father do? Does he get mad at him? Maybe. But guess what he does? He's really happy that he's back. The son was lost, right, to him and his brother, but now he's found, he came back. And instead of getting all mad or making a big deal of it, he gives him this ring. Look at this ring. You can see that there. I'll have Jesus point to it, right? Gives him a big ring and then he throws him what? A party. So even though he wasted all that money on all that partying, he welcomes him back. Here's another version of it. Do you ever work with watercolors? My friend Linda here at church and Di, they love doing watercolors. They have some amazing watercolors. They're so beautiful. Flowers and wildlife and landscapes and so forth. This is a watercolor from the 1800s. So a little bit before my time, but old timey for sure. And this is from Pennsylvania, where some folks called the Pennsylvania Dutch live. So you're going to see some German on this one. Here's another retelling in two pictures of the story of the prodigal son. Okay? And this is from the 1800s. So who do you think that is? Is that the dad or the son? Right? That's the son. He's got his fine clothes on. He's got a cool hat and a beautiful horse. And guess who's saying goodbye? The dad's saying goodbye. He's not happy about it. In fact, he's probably really sad that his son is taking his part of the inheritance or the money and leaving. But he's leaving, right? And underneath it says, the lost son, the lost son bids farewell to his father. So there you can see it. Father's waving goodbye. Son's taken off, dressed all fancy. Look at, he's got nice boots on there and everything, right? So later on in the story, what did he do? He went and had a bunch of big parties and spent all his money. Um, and he comes back and with no shoes on. Look at that. Oh, where's his coat? Where's his cool hat? Where's his horse? He even lost his horse. And these uh, other party goers, uh, it says here in German along the bottom, because he does not have any money anymore, he was very much despised. So fair weather friends, just hanging out with him while his money lasted. But so this, la this lady's got like a whip or something. This lady's got a club and they're telling him, get out of town. Where's he going to go? We learned in the story that he goes to take care of pigs and then realizes I could be at home where I should be. And then he goes home and guess what? His father welcomes him with open arms. So from the Spark Story Bible, finally getting to the Story Bible, Judy, here we go. The Spark Story Bible is the story of the prodigal son. Okay. Jesus spent time, Jesus spent time with all sorts of people even people who had done bad things. This made some people mad. Like, why would Jesus spend time with bad people? Why is Jesus always around people who do bad things? They grumbled. Jesus heard them, and then he told them this story. Here's a son, a son of a father, and two workers, and they look kind of grumbly too, don't they? They are not happy. And here's why. A man had two sons. The younger son, who was a bit wild and crazy, came to his father and said, Dad, I, don't, I want to get away from here. I want my money. And when he says my money, he means the inheritance that would one day be his. He wanted it now so he could go goof off. This made the father sad. Look, he's super sad there, right? Um, but he split his money and gave his son the part that was his, the younger son packed his bag and he headed away from home. There he is, heading away from home. So long, Dad, he says. Dad, happy or sad? Dad's super sad. Yep. The son traveled to a faraway country and spent all his money on fancy parties. Remember, we saw one of the parties and food and drink. Soon he had no more money. He, gave, he spent all his money, he was gone. And he had no place to stay. 
Lucky for him, he found a man who let him sleep in his barn if the sun fed the pigs. Again, not the worst job. Farmers do it every day. But he was, he was like trying to just get back on his feet and get it together. And there he was, sleeping among the pigs. He was sleeping in the pigsty, Judy. Look at that. You see those pigs around there? Feeling blue and all sad. He says, what am I thinking? He said to himself as he fed the pigs, the men who work for my father have more than enough to eat, and here I am starving. I'll go home and say to my father, Dad, I made a big mistake. I'm not good enough to be your son, but would you let me work for you? So he went home. I just thought of this, Judy. You could say he kind of repented. He thought about it and felt in his heart, you know what? Let's go home. Let's apologize to dad and then go from there, right? While he was still far away from home, his father saw him. His father ran and threw his arms around him. The father put a ring on his son's finger and shoes on his feet and ordered for what? A party to be thrown for his son had, who had returned. His son right there who was lost, now much happier to be home. And his father, super sad that he had left, now happy that once, was, that once what was lost to him was now found, right? Just like happens to us sometimes, doesn't it, right? Lost and found. Oh, Judy, we are walking through Lent, and thanks for joining us, right, Judy? On our journey through this music and through these stories. We're so happy you're here and hope you can join us. We got a couple more, right, don't we, Judy, down the line? So, um, and as you walk your journey through Lent, remember there's fasting, there's prayer, there's doing good things, right? And sometimes you need guidance. You're like, well, what does that mean? Well, Jesus has an answer to that. What does it mean? Jesus taught us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer, right? Jesus taught the importance of fasting. And Jesus did good works himself, ones that we can try and think about and go, yeah, maybe that's a way for us to do that too. But we sometimes need guidance, don't we, Judy? Right? We need a teacher. We need a mentor. We need a guide. So we're going to do a song called Guide My Feet. It involves some clapping. Oh, I'm getting on the beat there. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. Oh, Lord, now guide my feet while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Judy. I've done some things in my life that were kind of in vain. You try something or you do something, and you know what? Maybe it didn't work out. But that's what our prayer is in this song, to guide my feet or to hold my hand, right? Or to help me along the way so it's not in vain, so that we can appreciate Jesus and appreciate the message of loving God and loving each other better. So how about hold my hand, Judy, right? If you hold hands. Hold my hand while I run this race. Hold my hand while I run this race. Oh, Lord, now hold my hand while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. I'm God's child. Judy is a child of God. And you are a child of God. Here's a verse about that. Goes like this. I'm God's child while I run this race. Now you, you are God's child while you run this race. We all are. We are God's children while we run this race. For we don't want to run this race in vain. Keep running, keep walking, keep swaying, right, Judy? Uh -huh. Keep swaying, keep hopping every day. Uh, make it special. And uh, to you, my friends, we will say peace, and a peace that involves, well, that Jesus says it passes all understanding, right? Or I guess Paul wrote about that. The, the peace we get from Jesus and from God is that which passes all understanding. But peace to you, my friend, wholeness, and good and a good life and so we will say shalom just like judy greeted us with shalom we will leave you with shalom ready judy 
Shalom, my friend, shalom, my friend, shalom, shalom. Go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God, shalom. Bye, everybody.